Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to kick this one off a little different and tell you to buckle up because you're in for something on this one. You guys, this is the most vile, disgusting chapter I have I have read. I don't know, that race one was pretty bad, but this one's pre- this one's probably equal to that. Um they go so hard after Catherine in this part of the book. You'll hear As I continue on in my recap slash review of this book, um, I get really upset because it is, it is so awful how they treat her. They are so, they're horrific and nasty toward her and they use her good work, such as her mental health charities, things that are important to her against her and they call her lazy and they call her cold and they, they're they straight up calling her names in this book and they're they're trying to undermine everything she's done and so we I'm not standing for it I'm calling it out I'm calling out I'm calling out their awful behavior so stay tuned and buckle up for this one here we go we have lots to talk about we have lots to get into in this episode and I'm I'm so disgusted by the three of them. I, it actually feels good to sit down and talk to you all about it because I want you to know the drivel in this book. And so we're going to be revealing it. We're going to be calling out the lies and the BS. And we're going to say, um, yeah, we're just going to discuss it amongst ourselves. And I'm going to say, I see you, Megan. I see what you're doing. We're going to call it out right here. Um, as uh, Again, uh, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I'm Jen. Honk, honk, everybody. I honk because... Uh, a Megan follower told me I sound like a drunk goose, which I love. So here I am honking away. Honk, honk. I would rather sound like a drunk goose than a dangerous, evil, malicious, nasty, vile, vicious, uh, disgraceful, disgusting, horrid, noxious, repugnant cow. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather sound like a drunk goose. Thanks. Um, All right, let's get into this. You guys, I sound like I'm in a bad mood. I'm not. I'm actually, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be talking about all this. I just, this book, it's doing my head in. It really is. It's rough. It's rough to get through, but we can do this together. Here we go. All right. Here's my thing on chapter 12, part one, Camilla. All right. You ready for this? This part has a subtitle, a subheading, if you will. Do you know what it is? The transformation of a mistress. I'd like to remind you all again that Omid is pretending like he wrote this book by himself when clearly it's Megan. And I believe Harry. I've heard the argument why it's not Harry, but I do think Harry had a hand in this. Harry had a very open disdain, loud disdain toward Camilla, Queen Camilla, that he called the Wicked Witch in his... Or the Wicked Stepmother, something like that, in his book, um, Spare. And we see a lot of Camilla bashing here. Oh, just wait till we get to the Catherine of it all. It is beyond disgusting what they've done to her. So we will be talking about that. Honestly, here's my here's my truth. I will be talking more about the Catherine of it all because here's my thoughts on the Camilla. All right. I think Omid is a misogynist. I think Megan hates all women. <laughs> And I think Harry has a bone to pick with Camilla. So truthfully, I'm not interested in going over every detail of every grievance they have about Camilla. Um, I think she's had a long, hard uphill battle. I think she seemed, she, to me, again, an American outsider here. To me, I understand, you know, I see it. I see that she was popular Sorry, she was unpopular for a lot of years, and I understand why. I think she's worked hard to earn people's respect. I do. And I think that King Charles seems very happy with her. From my research, from everything I could tell, she seems pleasant. She seems like a hardworking royal. She seems like she looks out for the family and that People genuine or generally and genuinely seem to really like her. So there's not much I care to add to this conversation. I can tell you Omid can't stand her. He wrote horrible things about her. I can tell you Harry can't stand her. But I don't, again, I don't really care what they think. I don't believe anything they think. I'll make my own opinions on this. 
but I'm more interested in dissecting, spending time on the lies they say about Catherine and, and telling you how wrong they get it. But I am telling you they've gotten, they've gotten everything wrong. They've gotten Camilla wrong. What else is new, right? Um, I mean, just one example here, <laughs> Omid claims that Camilla thanked Piers Morgan. I'm sure you've heard the story by now that Camilla thanked Piers Morgan uh, for uh, calling out Megan and that <laughs> he made this sensational claim that Queen Camilla and Piers Morgan talk on the phone all the time. Piers is on record as denying this. Oh, I, I totally forgot. I'm, I'm coming back to this. The reason I'm showing you all these pictures in the background, duh, the control claw. The reason is, is because when we get to the Catherine part, just you wait, just you wait for the things that she says about Catherine. It's so disgusting and how she, I'm saying she, I know Omid says they didn't work together, but they clearly did. The way that Megan paints herself and the horrible way she talks about Catherine. I'm getting there. Don't worry. I'm getting there. Um, but also, in this part of the book, she said that her time with the royal family was very lonely and very isolating. So I'm showing you all these royal functions where she couldn't keep her damn hands off Harry. They're not all royal functions, but mostly royal functions where she couldn't keep her hands off Harry. They were clinging to each other. Um, the control claw of it all, right? And yet claiming isolation and loneliness. Huh. Weird. Doesn't look like it. Looks like you just can't. You can't stand for Harry to have any free reign, so you got to hold on to him. And I don't know. I also got that vibe. It was kind of like, he's mine. It's like, we're good. Nobody else wants that doofus. <laughs> Looks like you picked the short straw. Looks like you both picked the short straw, honestly. Okay. Back to Camilla. So, um, the, so I just, do you, I hope you understand why I'm not, I'm really not interested in going so much into this chapter. I just, I'm curious to know your thoughts on Camilla. I mean, but I just feel like she's, I don't know how to say it. I think what she and Charles did was screwed up. But I also am not so blindly following Diana that I don't think she was as innocent. And I'm not trying to disparage Diana. I don't have a problem with Diana. I think there's a lot of things that she did was great. And I think she has charisma and charm and all the things, right? I think that both of them, it sounds like had a role in breaking up that marriage. I believe that Diana is on record as to having outside dalliances as well. So I don't know that Charles is the villain exactly that he's painted to be, but I don't think he's innocent. And I think it, I think it all could have been handled better. How about that? I think it's taken Camilla a long time to earn people's respect. And I think she's finally got it. So I'm going to leave that there. How about that? I think Omid sucks at life and continues to get everything wrong. I think he is the mouthpiece of Harry and Meghan. Once again, I keep saying this, but I need you to hear me. He is talking for them. This is Harry and Meghan. This is Harry bashing Camilla. Now let's get to Meghan bashing Catherine because this is truly disgusting. Here we go. Chapter 12, part two. All right, geese, give me strength to get through this part because this is rough. Here we go. Part two, Catherine. They call her Kate. All right, page 288. So right off the bat in this chapter, Omid, I'm saying it just this last time. I have to because, you know, they're very litigious. Omid says he wrote this book by himself. I'm saying, in my opinion, this reeks of Megan. Megan wrote this shit. She really goes in hard for Catherine. Let me explain. Page 288. They go in to call Ka Catherine. See, I wrote down Kate because I kept calling her Kate. I hate that. Catherine. They call Catherine introverted. Okay. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. They say that she's not wanting to give public speeches. Okay. Didn't we just see her give a beautiful keynote speech? Haven't we seen more of those from her lately? We did not know anything, Omid. Let's keep going. That's just a little dig. The big ones are coming. All right. The next one is that, again, I talked about this in a previous video. Omid, any chance he gets, this is why I believe, well, maybe it's Megan too. I thought it was Harry saying this. Maybe it's Megan. Over and over and now again calls William, quote, work shy. Work shy William. Okay. Future king, work shy. Sure. 
Yorkshire William again, and then goes into why Catherine is lazy. Can't actually give valid reasons. Just calls her straight up lazy in the book. All right. Don't worry. We'll get there. I, I know. I hear you screaming at the... Uh, I hear you screaming at the TV or device that you're watching this on right now. I know. I know. All right. Let's keep going. Calls her lazy. Then... Goes on to call her work, Catherine's work, performative. Says that she brings awareness to things, but not action. Okay. I'm just, I'm relating the bad parts first, and then I'm going to let loose all my thoughts on all this. He criticizes her coverage that she gets and says that the press are just overwhelmingly positive for her, and it's basically saying it's not fair. He calls Catherine a shiny thing for the royal family. He says that it's more about her fashion and her hair. So I just, I want you to think about that. Okay, if Omid wrote that, is that not misogyny? And more uh, likely, Megan wrote that. What is that? If not, what, bullying coming for women? <laughs> The things that she denies over and over right here in print. Okay, let's keep going because it gets way worse. Um, oh, by the way, and then calling her again more about fashion. So are, are, are they trying to say that Megan's more about substance? I don't think so. <clears throat> All right, it keeps going. They take digs at Catherine and says that she's he hesitant and she's nervous about things. Whereas Megan is assured Okay, I can think about 30 other words, I 300 other words I'd call Megan. A shirt is not one of them. People found Megan's confidence intimidating. He's talking about, again, they are talking about people in the royal family. So they're trying to claim that they found Megan's confidence intimidating. This is the future king and queen. They're supposed to be so blown away by Megan that they found her confidence intimidating. Just take that in. All right. It went wrong when the American outsider became the star of the show. I shit you not. That is what he says in the book. That it went wrong because the American outsider became the star of the show. Okay. But I thought everybody hated Megan, right? Isn't that what they've been saying this whole time? Everybody hated her. But now all of a sudden she's the star of the show. Everybody loves her. And so the, what, the royal family's jealous? Yeah, the, it just doesn't make any sense. Let's keep going. No, let's not keep going. I'm stuck on this. Okay, so the whole book has been everybody hates Megan. Everybody's the ist words. Everybody's against Megan, but all of a sudden, I, and, and even including the press, but all of a sudden they're spinning in as Megan got better coverage, better attention. She was better at this job. And so what, now the UK people love her? Is that what they're trying to say? They can't even keep their message straight. It doesn't make any sense at all. Continuing on, page 292, same, I mean, same breath as all that stuff. They say, Megan was Princess Diana all over again. Again with this bullshit. <laughs> no, Princess, I don't even need to argue it. Princess Diana had charm, class, charisma, things that Megan will never have and never understand. Things that Catherine, I believe, possesses, Megan does not. Let's keep going. All right. Here's my point on all this, and here's where I'm super pissed about all this. All right. Let's pretend for one second. Just go with me on this journey. journey. Don't get mad at me. Here we go. Let's pretend for a second that this is true. They can't, you know, they just said Catherine's so nervous, and she was shy and intimidated about things, whereas Megan was confident, right? Okay, let's pretend like that's true for one second. It's not, but let's pretend like it is. All right. Hmm. Couldn't we say then that Megan turned her back on Catherine? This whole time we've heard claims that, oh, Catherine never would help Megan when Megan was struggling. Okay, all right. Let's, let's for one second suspend all... <laughs> Reality. We know nothing they say is true, but let's pretend like it is. And that Kate was struggling, according to Omid, that she was nervous, according to Omid, slash Megan, and that Megan was a confident one. Huh. Then again, couldn't an argument, 
sorry, couldn't an argument get made that uh, Megan turned her back on Catherine? Hmm, yeah. Yeah. They'll never, ever, like, they're so hypocritical, they can't even admit that, that, that what they're saying doesn't make sense. We can see through it. I can see through it. It's not hard, but they can't. All right, let's keep going. Harry and Megan, according to Omen, again, I can't make this stuff up, introduced the world to a more modern royal. He's talking about Megan. Again, this is a bashing Catherine segment, but he breaks in to say how wonderful Megan is. Again, and how Harry and Megan introduced the word to world to a more modern royal. And it made the Cambridges look dull in comparison. So again, I'm pointing out the inaccuracies, the hypocrisies of what they're saying. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it. That supposedly everybody was the ist words toward Megan. Everybody spewed vitriol. And, and I'm talking about the family, the press, the people. They couldn't stand Megan. <laughs> and yet she was such a rock star, according to you guys, that the Cambridges were jealous, envious, felt dull in comparison. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. You're, you can't even see what's right in front of your face. They talk about how Harry and Megan connected with younger fans. Okay. Again, doesn't make any sense. I know there's dispute over Megan's age. I didn't know it either, but I'm going on what her, you know, I talked to her brother, Thomas Markle Jr. And he alleges that her age is, um, what, 42. And so I, it's still that she's older than Catherine. Princess of Wales, and yet they're trying to convince us otherwise here. It, again, Omid's been called out for his lies about his own age. This is weird. This is weird at this point. All right, let's keep going. You ready for this? Again, look at the background pictures while I read you this. Apparently, according to Omid, Megan found her time as a working royal lonely and isolating. Okay. Look at every picture in front of you and tell me if that's the case. Because she, I can't, I can barely recall anything that she did without Harry. They barely did any work, which I will get into. I have notes about that too. But they barely did any work with their time in the royal family. Anything. Um, and she wouldn't let go of Harry and the work. Like right here. This picture is a great example. They were on a tour. This is part of the Australian tour. Right? So they're on a working royal tour. And here we go. Double handhold. Okay, very, uh, very isolating, right? Very isolating. All right, let's keep going. Uh, page two ninety three. They call Kate Catherine. Sorry, they call Catherine cold. All right. Um, spent more time talking about Megan than talking to Megan. That was one of Omid's claims. Okay. How would he know that? I don't believe it. But let's just pretend like it's true. How would Omid know that? Doesn't this sound like Megan with an agenda? More than anybody? Yeah, I think so, too. You ready? It gets way worse. Talk about before they basically called her, um, what was it, like, Stepford wife? Doesn't really have any big causes. <laughs> Things like that. And now, in this part, they're saying that she spent, oh, sorry, that she uses her advocacy of mental health. And yet she wouldn't help Megan. So they're basically saying, look, she'll advocate for mental health, but Megan was struggling with her mental health and she wouldn't help her. I don't mean to keep pausing like this. I'm just so enraged. I'm trying to collect my thoughts and I'm truly having a reaction here on Mike. I want, I want to discuss with you. So that's why I'm just, I'm processing because this is the biggest bunch of bullshit I've ever heard in my life. Um, Oh, and then he brings up, speaking of bullshit, he brings up the fight between Catherine and Megan and again claims that it's, uh, imagine that, that it's uh, all Catherine's fault. I'm saying imagine that because it's the same shit that uh, Megan tried to sell us to. That's all Catherine's fault. She brought flowers to apologize. Total bullshit, right? Okay. And then icing on the cake. He goes on to make it seem like, this is page 293, that um, William and Catherine were resentful because when Harry and Meghan left, it meant they had to do more work. Mm, 
more work. Who does that sound like? That doesn't sound like William and Catherine. It sounds like Harry and Meghan. All right. So, it, yeah, according to Omid, when they left, the Cambridge, the former Cambridges, now the Waleses, uh, were mad because they had so much more to do. All right. You ready? Let's unleash. Here we go. Harry and Meghan were known as the hardly working royals. Okay. Catherine has always been known for her work ethic along with, at the same time, balancing raising her young family. All right. Wasn't it Harry and Meghan that complained about not getting paid? Yeah, I think so too. They were too entitled, too lazy to actually do the work. We heard in revenge about how they would keep track of how many um, engagements Megan did. It was barely any. And even some of those engagements were like mm, going to a polo match. Called that work. Okay. And then think about just their track record since, right? They were the hardworking royals. They'll have us believe. No, hardly working royals. Okay. Uh, think about archetypes. Their podcasts. Weren't they called lazy grifters? Yeah, I think so too. Uh, think about Archwell. Weren't they outed as only working one hour a week? Yeah, they were. They don't even put in the work to raising their kids. There, I said it. Yep. I mean, they're never with them. We never see them. Like, it just, it doesn't make any sense what they're saying. This is all to rewrite history, to make themselves the victims and make it seem like they're the hardworking ones and William and Catherine were lazy grifters. No, no. I haven't heard that about William and Catherine. I have, however, heard that nonstop and repeatedly in similar forms about Harry and Meghan. <laughs> Omid then goes on to claim that by Harry and Meghan leaving, it made Catherine step up. Again, Catherine gets zero credit for anything she does on her own. It's not that, you know, her, again, her Continued time with the royal family has made her more confident that she's taken on more roles, things like that. No, no, no. It's that Harry and Meghan leaving made her step up. And then Obed claims that it made her become more relaxed. Okay. Think about what he's saying right there because I'm, I, I am. He's not thinking, but I am. All right. Maybe she became more relaxed because her stalker, Meghan, left. Maybe her tormentor. Megan left. And so it helped Catherine become more relaxed. To me, it just seems like Omid is arguing that point. That's how I'm taking it. Omid's too stupid to think about that, but I'm thinking about that. You guys, there's so much more to this chapter left, so much more that they bash Catherine, but I'm I'm actually livid about this. I am. So I'm going to end this episode here. I'm going to come at this with fresh eyes and a fresh mind, and we're going to keep going, but I'm stopping this one here because this, it goes beyond, again, I say if, if, if Omid wrote this, it's beyond misogynistic, but more likely Megan wrote it, and it, it, it's, it's envy, it's jealousy, it's all the things, right? It's, um, it's disgusting. It's in print for us all to see. We all knew of her complete obsession with the Princess of Wales. But this takes it to such a dark, disgusting, disturbing level. Belittling her causes that are near and dear to her, using that against her. And and again, I, I know I say this every episode, the whole thing that disgusts me, so much of this disgusts me, but the whole thing that disgusts me here is that nothing is ever Harry and Meghan's fault. They can do no wrong, according to Omid and according to themselves. We can see it here in print. They can do no wrong. And yet Catherine can do no right. Somehow they've tried to spin it as Catherine's responsibility for, again, we've been through it, but about not helping Meghan when she was struggling. What do you think you're doing right now? <clears throat> Using Catherine's causes against her. Do you think that that's good for her mental health? Or would you say that you're, I don't know, harming her mental health or trying to? Hopefully, you know, Catherine just keeps calm, carries on. But I'm saying, like, you talk about hypocrites. This is the most hypocritical garbage I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. 
So I'm going to leave this here and I just want you to take this all in and, and, and really digest it. Think about what Catherine's had to endure because of her stalker, Megan. This is terrible. This is repulsive, heinous behavior. I, it's shameful. It's shocking. It's it's atrocious. I mean, I could keep going on. Megan is vile. She's cruel, destructive. I've used that word before. She's nasty. She's scary, honestly. And the way that Omid, Harry, and Megan, yes, I'm lumping them all three together, has treated Catherine Princess of Will is it's hideous. It's it's appalling, honestly. They are nasty, vile, loathsome, repugnant people. Ugh. I cannot with any of them. I cannot with this bullshit. You guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for keeping me sane through this. Thank you for understanding my outrage and my disgust at all this. I, it's so rare that I'm speechless and here we are. After all, I here we are. Here we are. The way they've treated Catherine. It just breaks my heart for Catherine, but it makes me love her even more. And it makes me sickened by the three of them. You guys are the best. Thank you for everything. I'm going to end this one here. Again, there is more to this chapter, I'm sorry to say. I just need time to get through it. This is rough. This is horrible. No wonder this, I mean, this book sucks. Um, I know, I'm so eloquent sometimes. I get so frustrated, I get tongue-tied. I end up saying the same thing. I don't mean to, but I, I'm just disgusted. Anyway, guys, thank you for being here. I want you to know how much your support truly means to me. How much I appreciate you all. I do. If you want to further support the show, we have the merch. Not bloody likely. That's what I say to you three. Um, make it make sense. Recollections may vary. That's a very nice way to put that. Um, as well as Drunk Goose Club. Honk, honk, everybody. Honk, honk, my geese. Geese are very um, protective animals. So I am proud to be a goose. And I am proud of my fellow geese. And I'd like to thank Catherine, Princess of Wales is also a member of our Drunk Goose Club. Maybe not the drunk part, but the Goose Club. Um, and again, if you want to further support, check out Patreon, patreon.com slash Real Housewives Recaps. That's where I do bonus episodes, deep dives, all the things. So check it out there. Guys, thank you for everything. I want you to know how much it, it, it means to me. It really does. And uh, I'm sending you all hugs, especially Catherine, Princess of Wales. Take care. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.